In this video, we'll be taking a look at three NFL games happening on September 24th, 2023 and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games. So two picks for each game, six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three NFL games after fully watching this video. One more thing before we start, if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level, then check out our Patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks, parlay picks, and much more. Now let's get started. Indianapolis Colts vs. Baltimore Ravens The Indianapolis Colts make the trip to Baltimore to take on the Ravens on Sunday afternoon at m and Bank Stadium in a conference showdown in Week 3. Baltimore will be looking to remain undefeated on the season while the Colts will try to win their second game in a row. The Ravens won their last matchup against the Colts, which took place during the 2022 season, at home in overtime. Rookie QB Anthony Richardson, who was showing flashes of brilliance already, may miss this game due to a concussion. If that happens, Gardner Minshew will be thrust into action yet again after a solid week against Houston. Still, he's not as dynamic as Richardson, and this is a much tougher defense in his path. Indianapolis is still without Jonathan Taylor and at 3.9 yards per rush, shouldn't be trusted to dominate on the ground. Airing it out is their best bet, which falls on Minshew, Michael Pittman, and an offensive line that's only allowed four sacks so far. How will they hold up against the Ravens? The defense has dominated against the run, limiting their opponents to 2.6 yards per rush. It hasn't amounted to much, as they're giving up 7.9 yards per pass attempt. Eight sacks through two games is impressive, but not enough to offset the 51 points they've allowed in two weeks. Stopping the run will be crucial to slowing down the Ravens, but won't matter if they can't stop third down passes. Everyone should be suiting up, so let's see if Indianapolis' best is enough. Taking down the Bengals was huge for Baltimore last week, as they moved to 2-0 in this young season. They'll try to score at least 25 for the third straight week when they aim for a 3-0 start. It begins with a rushing attack that's racked up 288 yards in two weeks. Even with running back J.K. Dobbins done for the season, Lamar Jackson, Gus Edwards, and Justice Hill are still a terrorizing trifecta going downhill. Then there's a passing game that was the focus of improvement this offseason. So far it's sharp, making up for a lack of attempts with efficiency at 7.4 yards per attempt. As long as Lamar Jackson stays healthy, this should be one of the NFL's premier offenses. The defense was third in scoring last year and has only given up 33 points in 2023. Opposing teams are only gaining 4.3 yards per play on them so far. They've left both games with a takeaway and have six sacks already, albeit five were in week one. A few players are questionable this week, but only Marlon Humphrey seems like a real threat to be inactive among the starters. Even without him, the Ravens have managed to hold up through two games. Can they make it through? a third. The Ravens have won both of their games against the spread in 2023, including a convincing 25-9 victory against the Texans at home in Week 1. They have won two of their previous three games at home against the spread dating back to last season. The Colts have lost six of their last nine games against the spread away from their home stadium. The Colts have failed to cover the spread in seven of their last eight games versus American Football Conference North opponents. While the Colts did win their first road game of 2023 against a weak Houston squad, their defense allowed the opposing quarterback to throw for 384 yards and their offensive unit was on the field for 10 minutes less than their rival. The Ravens have ranked much higher than the Texans over the past year in points allowed per game and total yards allowed, so the Colts will most likely not win a shootout on the road as they did in Week 2. The Colts' offense stalled a bit after the departure of quarterback Richardson with a concussion last week. Indianapolis scored 14 points in the first quarter with Richardson at the helm and scored a total of 17 points over three quarters quarters without him. The Ravens have scored the first touchdown in 12 of their last 13 home games, so the Colts may find themselves in a hole early while trying to break in their new offensive schemes if Richardson does not play. With Richardson most likely out for the coming contest and Baltimore having a full week to prepare for his inexperienced backup, look for the Colts to struggle against the Ravens' top-tier defensive unit. The Colts gave up 31 to the Jaguars, 20 to the Texans, and can't stop the pass. Baltimore's offseason revamp of the passing game has been crisp 
so far, and that efficiency will lead to another healthy day offensively. Indianapolis defense is the main reason this won't be close. Still, the Colts' offense will struggle to muster anything too. They can't run the ball well and have to take on a stout rushing defense. The passing game isn't impressive, plus it might be relying on a backup quarterback this week. One who is also far less of a threat to run, which also hampers the offense. Baltimore tends to dominate at home, and they'll do it again on Sunday. If Anthony Richardson was 100% playing, the Colts might be a consideration. However, even if he suits up, the Ravens dominating is the more likely outcome. So the Baltimore Ravens to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. The Baltimore defense ranked third in the NFL in average points allowed per game in 2022 with 18.8. They have had similar results this season and they have managed to shave a few points off of their average. The Ravens have gone under the point total in eight straight games at home dating back to the fourth week of the season last year. While the Colts have gone over the point total and scored at least 21 points in both of their games this season, most of their possessions came with the dynamic Richardson under center. Indianapolis may have difficulty creating scoring opportunities with a backup quarterback running their offense against a brutal defensive unit on the road. The Colts will still face a stiff challenge offensively if Richardson is cleared to play, as the Ravens' defense has limited their opponent to 13 points or less in each of their previous five games at M&T Bank Stadium. The Colts ranked second to last in the league in average points per game on the road last season. The Ravens will probably score at least 24, but with a lead, they'll struggle to run the clock out against a sturdy Indianapolis run defense. It won't be impossible, but rushing won't lead to easy points as it usually does for the Ravens, which will keep their offense subdued a bit. As for the Colts, they will have a tough time trying to find points. The Ravens look just as sharp defensively right now as they did last year when they were third in scoring. The Colts are relying on Gardner Minshew to fill in at quarterback in a lackluster running game. Indianapolis hitting double digits will be a tough task. This game may come close, but it won't hit 45 points. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. Denver Broncos vs. Miami Dolphins, a pair of American football conference opponents in different situations after the first two weeks of the season lock up in search of a win down in South Beach. The Denver Broncos are on the road as they make the cross-country trek to take on the Miami Dolphins Sunday afternoon. Denver let a first-half lead slip away as they were beaten 35-33 at home by Washington last Sunday in their previous contest, losing outright as a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Miami knocked off New England on the road, 24-17, last Sunday night, covering the line as a one-point favorite. In the all-time regular season series between the teams, the Dolphins own a 12-6-1 advantage, but the Broncos have taken three of the last four matchups. That includes a 20-13 home win in the most recent matchup on November 22, 2020. The Dolphins have started the season 2-0, and a loss doesn't seem in the cards for them yet as the Denver Broncos travel to Miami for Week 3. The Broncos are 0-2 after their first two games, which includes a 16-15 Week 1 loss to the Raiders on their home field followed by a 35-33 loss to the Commanders, once again in Denver. Both losses have come down to the last possession, and in last week week's case, a two-point conversion. Russell Wilson completed a Hail Mary as time expired to bring the Broncos within two, but they failed to convert the two-point conversion and lost yet another close game. But this time, oddsmakers don't expect too close of a game. The Dolphins are six-and-a-half-point favorites in their first home game of the year after two road wins against the Chargers and Patriots. A big reason for their success is Tua Tagovailoa, who is currently the frontrunner for the MVP award as we head into Week 2. It's well-deserved recognition for the quarterback who has thrown for 715 yards and four touchdowns through two weeks. His connection with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle looks stronger than ever, and the absence of Mike Jasicki doesn't seem to be impacting the offense. In the backfield, Raheem Mostert has been a huge addition as he scored three touchdowns already and ran for over 100 yards against an elite Patriots defense in Week 2. The Denver Broncos are making an early case for the worst team in the league, as they lost to the Raiders and Commanders at home. The Broncos led Washington 21-3 last week and had a 96.3% win probability according to the ESPN, and still lost. Not great, folks. The Miami Dolphins won road games on both coasts and now come home to what should be a packed house as excitement is as high in South Florida as it's been in a while. The Dolphins are being crowned by some as the best team in the American Football Conference, and Tua is the current betting favorite for MVP at many books. The Broncos came up just short in both their games this season, but the fact remains that they have to find a way to win games like that if they hope to turn things around. They now have to go and contend with a high-octane Miami team in this contest.
The Dolphins may be without Waddle here and have to avoid the desire to look ahead to next week's trip to Orchard Park to face the Bills. With that said, Miami has the better depth to work with on both sides of the ball and are at home for the first time this season after back-to-back -back road victories. Everything's coming together for the Finns, and although the Broncos look better than they did last season, I'm not ready to get off the Miami bandwagon yet. Until we see Denver put together a full 60 minutes, you have to fade them accordingly. So the Miami Dolphins to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Denver split their first two games this season in relation to the total. The Broncos combined with the Raiders to score 33 points to stay under a number of 43 and a half points in the opener. Denver followed that up with a combined 68 points in the loss to the Commanders to soar past the number of 39 points last week. Six of the Broncos' last seven games dating back to last season have gone over the number. Miami has split their two games in relation to the total as well this season. The Dolphins and Chargers piled up 70 points in the opener to cruise past the total of 50 and a half points. Last week, the Dolphins and Patriots combined for 41 points to wind up short of the 46-point total in the contest. Neither of these red zone defenses have been trustworthy, and likewise, neither defense has proven they can get off the field on third down. Denver and Miami, both, are sitting top 10 in yards per play and the defensive lapses in the red zone should allow the offenses to find success here. Miami likes to run an up-tempo offense and Denver has the wide receivers to stretch the field and make the big play over the top. This is the second highest total of any Week 3 game. Only the Chargers and Vikings have a higher total, and that's more because of the bad defenses than good offenses. But back to this game, the total has risen steadily since it opened. Last Sunday, this total opened at 45 and a half at most sportsbooks. By Thursday, the total was 48 and a half. A three-point increase in just a few days tells me there has been a lot of money and big bets going on the over. Usually, the Broncos' defense has been the pride of the team, but their secondary got ripped in Week 2 by a rookie quarterback. Now, with Tagovailoa and Hill on offense, I don't see a way for Denver to be able to contain both Hill and Waddle. If the Broncos play it safe and try to heavily defend the passing game, Tua will let Mostert run wild, as he did in Week 2 against the Patriots. I expect both offenses to continue to find success here while neither defense appears to have found their footing. As long as the Broncos can get about 17 points, this game should be a high-scoring one, with most of it coming via Miami. Look for Miami to put up their share of points and the Broncos do their part late to push this game past the total. Over the projected total is our full game total pick. New England Patriots vs. New York Jets It's an American Football Conference East clash when the Patriots visit the Jets on Sunday. The Patriots dropped a division tilt to the Dolphins, 24-17, at home last Sunday night. The Jets got crushed last Sunday by the Cowboys, 30-10. The Patriots are 0-2 against the spread this season and the Jets are 1-1 against the spread. This was supposed to be the time that the Jets finally passed the Patriots and put them far in their rearview mirror. Yet with Rodgers' injury and despite how bad New England has looked, New York is once again the underdog against their division rivals. It has been 14 straight wins straight up in favor of New England who are 8-2 against the spread over the last 10 meetings with the Jets. It seems that no matter what the situation is, things tend to come up Patriots in these matchups. The second meeting last year they won by a 10-3 margin. Weather will factor into this game and likely keep things mostly to the ground. That will surprisingly favor New England, largely due to Hall's knee issues. Last weekend it was Wilson who was the Jets' top rush with 36 yards. I'm thinking New England can handle that. There is also the matter of Belichick being a master in this sloppy weather kind of game, which this is fully expected to be as a potential tropical cyclone looms. The Pats have been one of the luckiest teams in the NFL through two weeks, and a couple of inches could be separating New England from 0-2 and 1-1 had they scored on that late drive. But the past is the past, and I don't think New England lets it get away here. Mac Jones has actually been fairly solid out of the gate so far, and I'm still not ready to trust Zach Wilson if I'm being honest. This Jets defense will be tough on Jones and New England, but I still feel Jones is the better quarterback as a starter here, and New England's defense is no joke either, especially with Bill Belichick drawing something special up for the Jets. New England needs a win and is finally taking on a team that isn't clearly better than them. The Patriots have loved facing the Jets, hence the seven-season long winning streak. 
Their defense will take away the Jets' running game and force Zach Wilson to beat them with his arm. Wilson hasn't shown that he can do that yet and has turned the ball over in both of his games so far. He's also taken six sacks. The Patriots' defense will take advantage of their easiest matchup of the young football year. The Jets' defense is going to be better than they were in the last game, but the Patriots aren't going to need to score many points in this game to cover the spread. Wilson is going to have at least a couple of turnovers here, and that is going to be the difference here as the Patriots will get the job done. Can Wilson give the Jets a chance? I don't think he can. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. Mac Jones hasn't taken the third-year leap that many were hoping for, and so far we haven't seen any progress at all. The passing game once again seems to have a very low ceiling, as it's never a good sign when three of your top four guys in receiving yards are running backs or tight ends. Ramonder Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott are combining to average three yards per carry, so don't expect the ground game to bail them out here either. We know the Jets are going to be conservative with Zach Wilson under center, and last week they only mustered 10 points against Dallas. Wilson threw three interceptions while completing less than 50% of his passes, and they're going to try to keep it on the ground with Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook as much as possible. This is a fairly low total and for good reasons. First being the weather. This could turn into a very wet game, making it hard to grip and throw the football. That puts things on the ground and again, a slippery ball could be cause for turnovers. A ground game also slows the whole affair down while keeping the clock rolling. Then there is the fact that both offenses are not good, especially the run games. Neither of these teams are going to be busting out 75-plus runs in this game and passes of that ilk are completely out of the question. The Patriots' offensive line is banged up and last week they had trouble run blocking, allowing eight tackles for loss. Their last meeting saw a total of 13 points scored between them. These two teams may be at odds often, but they're very alike. Each side boasts a tough defense that can give any opponent a tough time. The only problem is that neither offense is consistent enough to score often and lead to easy wins. Both defenses are getting their easiest match up when it comes to the opposing offense. Neither offense is averaging over 20 points per game through these first two weeks, nor do they project to be great units. This game, like three of the four Patriots versus Jets games before it, will likely be low scoring. This total is low, but not low enough for me to have any interest in the over. This game feels like a race to 17, so expect a low scoring offense suffocating game. Under the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed. Subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.